is CGTN, China Global Television Network. Kibira nye ilikuwa mbaya kitambo kulikuwa na wenzi wengi sana na siku hizi nye hata unaweza kaa bila kusikia hata mwenzi ameshikwa mahali ama mechaomu ama mfanyo wa nini ndiyo naona nye kibira na hundime si kama kitambo It's known without books it's not easy to make it to me as an artist I believe we only need a tool to bring change. And this tool to me, it can be educational background, it can be a skill, it can be a hobby of what you love. I wanted to tap into that talent because if you don't nurture the talent while it is young, it actually it gets, it gets lost. So I wanted to use my expertise in the media to nurture that talent, to mold them to become uh, the future journalists. population of over 250,000 people, Kibra slum, located in Kenya's capital Nairobi, is divided into 13 villages. The largest population here is the youth. Majority of them are determined to make a change in their home, Kibra. Story about? Okay, what is the need of you doing this way? Asking them the difference between the last extra and the last extra. Okay. What they used to buy before, like clothes, um, they used to call uh, their relatives to come celebrate with them. So uh, I think that's, that is going to change. Then, meet Job Bitange, one of the residents here who's made significant change through journalism and education. And also, we don't move like a, a crowd. So we, we I started the club in, in 2013. That is when we started the journalism club here. But by then, we were not that serious because I only had one student, and he was in high school. He was uh, so passionate about uh, telling stories. He could go out to the field, look for stories, and then asked me to help him to, to film and script and do the final edit. So we did that for like a, a whole year. 
and at that time what motivated me to do it seriously is because through the stories that we did together with that first student who is right now uh, a sports anchor and reporter at KTN we we actually sold our, our reports to one of the local media houses and through that we raised funds that enabled that that boy who is a total orphan to go to school to complete his studies and eventually even join college we raised some good money mask yako java po wava mask vizuri mask wa vizuri kunja hapo juu vizuri This group is helping me a lot because uh, as young as I am, being able to report, being able to have a story, being able to have the skills of research, being able to even know how to negotiate with people, yeah, you can see you're actually preparing for the future. I see myself becoming an anchor at an international station. <laughs> I discovered I liked journalism when I was in uh, grade 8. Uh, I liked reading storybooks. I loved the work of the anchors. Okay, my mentor was uh, Lillian Muli. I used to imitate her. Yeah, and I realized I had passion for journalism. I didn't actually discover anything about the group. I found out about one member, that is Sylvia Atiambo, on Facebook and I loved her job and I thought we could work together. Evelyn, a farmer from Kibera, is among the residents that have been affected by the pandemic. She has now resorted to farming for her to cater her basic needs. For South Yetu, I am Sylvia Adhiambo. Okay, I saw her stories, the stories that she's been doing from Kibera, and uh, I texted her and uh, asked her for a permission to meet her, so they came with job to our home and uh, they told me we could work together. There's, there are so many reasons why I started the, this journalism club but uh, I was driven by the fact that I work in the media and I wanted to give something related to the media to the communities. I wanted to tap into that talent because if you don't nurture the talent while it is young it actually it gets it gets lost. So I wanted to use my expertise in the media to nurture that talent, to mold them to become uh, the future journalists. Here goes someone. Hello. Hi, to go someone. What are you doing? Apart from you joining me, I'm just going to go somewhere. The other thing is to raise the children here their self-esteem to raise their self-esteem and also to build their confidence because i've seen i've seen many of the kids had the potential of uh, their good storytellers uh, they, they they speak well they have so many things that happen in their in their community but they didn't have a voice to tell the stories out there so i looked at it and said why can't we do it through TV, through videos? And that is how everything was born. To build their self-esteem, to build their confidence, and to give them a platform to, to speak out. Okay, Job, the, the founder of our club, is very hardworking and understanding. He is so patient with me. He understands where I have not gained. So he will repeat and repeat again until I get what I want. He is one of the people that I like to look upon because of the way he works. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much. I, I studied media. I graduated in 2003. So that was uh, th three years of learning. And after that, I, I was lucky enough while I was young to get a, a job in one of the local media houses, KTN, as a, as a video editor. I worked there for quite a while. I left KTN in, in 2012. Yeah, so from there, I moved to another local media house, now as a senior video editor. Uh, that was an, in 2012. I worked there for two years until 2014 when I got now. Uh, I, I, I moved on to CGT and it was actually, actually almost the same time when we began uh, Shine Kibera Educational Center and 
that's when I, I started the journalism club. Utamambia Santi wapototea mdaake na interview and then we go to a different platforms. Yeah. So mutamutan so kwanza lazima umambia. I support him so much because I've come to realize the benefit it has to the girls and the boys in the slum. We have one girl who is uh, reporting in uh, the national media, so it's really an achievement. I've come to accept it and I really support him so much in that uh, I'll have to ask even teachers from different schools to give me the kids whom they think are interested in journalism or the kids who have um, potential in journalism so that uh, Job can get a, an easy task just to, to teach them. Shana began her musical career almost three years ago, and since it's been hit song after hit song. Times that I don't exactly remember the words of a song. Seven years later, Job's trainees have gone on to report on all matters Kibra, showing a side unknown to many while highlighting the plight of Kibra residents. My name is Sylvia Diambo and I am the future award-winning journalist of tomorrow. And so we are. And thank you, Job. I met Nancy, my lovely wife, in, uh, in 2010, actually the beginning of 2010. By that time I was living here in, in Kibera. I was still working in the media. Uh, but I used to go around and take photos in Kibera just as a, just for fun. And also at that time actually Nancy was uh, came for a medical camp here. She was an intern at Nairobi, Nairobi Hospital, so they had a medical camp here in Kibera and she was involved into, into it. So while we met there, we just chatted, we exchanged numbers. She, she used to tell me that uh, I, I never dreamt of living here in Kibera. And I, I, I even never thought that I could stay here because I knew this place as a, as a bad place. It was actually her first time to come to Kibera at that, at that, at that moment. So the only thing she knew about Kibera was uh, uh, Islam, poor people, bad structures. I'm Miss Nancy Bitange, a mother of four, two girls and two boys. At first I was so much scared because it was um, after post-election violence. So I knew very many bad things about Kibera and I knew that so many people in Kibera are bad. So when I came here, um, it took me some time to get used to the place because when, whenever I walked out of the house, whoever I met, I thought it, it was a bad person, like could even attack you because they usually can tell who is new in the place. So I was so much scared, but um, I got some uh, assurance from Job, like we have good people here, it was just elections. It happens in, even in different countries. So it's a good place to stay. I remember here actually used to be like a, our, our entertainment joint, video joint here, where we used to come with a, like a two bob, three bob. We watch movies, yeah, until late. Whenever she could go for work, like uh, at that time she was an intern at, at Nairobi, Nairobi Hospital, we could go together 
take her to the stage, ensure that uh, she's safe, take her matatu, and also go to my work. And then in the, in the evening, I used to call her, or she could call me and tell me, now I finished my job, I'm heading home. And over time, she, start, she actually got used to it. Yeah, this is actually, this is the exact structure. Mm. Somebody's there Ah, so let me, let me take you to, I'm taking you to where I, I used to stay while in college. Apart from being scared of the place, I, I got that um, sympath feeling, like you could go get kids just um, outside where others are in school and nobody's caring for them. You can imagine the trenches, how they are very dirty, just playing with that dirty water. Together, the couple started a school that offered education for free. I was thinking, how, how can I help these kids? And uh, I was uh, a bit scared to tell Job that we really need to start a, a small school for the kids because you can see our careers are just parallel. But I knew it's only education which can um, help these kids. So it took me some time before I told him. And when I told him, I was so much surprised that he never even uh, said no as an answer. He said, yes, why can't we do that? Because uh, I didn't know how to do it myself. But if you are willing, we can work together and I can fully support you. Nancy was actually the, the main teacher and me, I was helping on the side. After a short while, we realized some people who are watching us, what we were doing, they also got inspired and we got untrained teachers. That was a blessing because uh, we now started giving out lessons in a more regular way. We, we had a plan on what we, we should do. Uh, now, when uh, trained teachers came in, uh, but uh, those who had no jobs and they came in as volunteers, they showed us a proper way of running that small school. Now, the register came in. We started following now on the kids. We had to contact uh, their parents. They had a strict time on when to report and when to leave. We had assessment tests to, to assess what we are doing. And we also developed now a motto, my best is enough. We knew we were doing our best, even though it wasn't enough. While I was doing what I was doing in the in the slum, I got a connection. There were people who were helping me uh, in terms of uh, feeding, sometimes paying the volunteer teachers. Now I came up with a, with a bigger dream, a bigger vision. Uh, that required them also to dig deeper into, into their pockets for, for the support. They agreed and we did a fundraiser. Yeah, some, some other, other people came with uh, bags of cement, other people came with uh, iron sheets, others gave me money. Within a very short time, this place was uh, superb. Some of the donations we get from our friends, they come with anything that they have. They, even though we don't have a, a pitch to play uh, tennis, we just take them and give it to some of, our, of some of the kids out here who actually play the game. Actually, missionary movement came in to like uh, support us in everything. Paying the teachers, they're paying, they're paying the rent, and also for the food that the kids eat here. Also, even on the school supplies. You see, we have in a big space. You can't compare with where we started. We have uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We have seven, seven classes, and each class can accommodate an average of uh, 20 kids. 
but the, but we can't take more because we cannot sustain their being here. So we have like over 100 students to be precise. This is uh, where our cooks do their work to ensure that uh, our kids have a full stomach and they have all the energy so that they can concentrate in class. We, are, we even have now a vision to build a high school for, for these kids because we realize it is expensive to support the kids who are in high school. Um, I'm willing to run, that is uh, over, my goal is 2,000 kilometers for, for education. So we are raising money to build a school. On a good day, this place is very warm, full of activities, kids, playing around, learning. You know, our school is, uh, is not that big, so you could stand at any, any point and listen to teachers teaching in class, kids answering that good interaction. Uh, but that thing is no, is no more because courtesy of COVID-19. Actually, we have a very limited space. This is a play area. My favorite class is here. Uh, they, this is where the youngest uh, kids learn. This is their room and this is where they sleep. This is where they are, they are meant to sleep. The future of the school is now in limbo because there are those measures that have been put by the government that each school should have before we reopen the, the school. There's that social distancing, that is, a, that is number one. Our school is small, we don't try, even before we didn't have enough space, now we are required to have more space. This place is uh, made of concrete, you can't expand it. Even if it was a metal structure, we don't have any space to expand. Running such a school is, uh, is difficult because we need to pay teachers. It won't add up to pay teachers a salary while they have few students in class. It won't have even any economic sense to, to rent out this area for few, for few teachers. We don't have enough water for, for use. We buy water, we don't have enough running water. We only have two toilets. So those are the reasons why we are worried about 2021 when all the schools are going to to reopen. I'm, I'm just worried. I'm just worried because uh, most of the most of the kids here have been depending on my school for for learning. Most of the parents are. I don't know what I, I don't know what I'll do. I'm just uh, I'm just hoping that things might change and. If that means uh, I I don't know yeah. That's not a funny idea. Zango ni gani kwanza? Okay. Apa. Legendary. Mecha ni ndani sasa. Hey, 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 hey. But I know I'm here. We both have that passion for giving back to the community. Most of the things, I always uh, make everything ready for him because um, he does more of uh, camera work. So I have to organize. So like if we are, we are meeting the teenagers, I have to look for the teenagers, look for the venue, make everything ready so that uh, he can come in because uh, he's yeah, very so busy. He always plans his day before he sleeps. I must put everything together so that when he comes, he doesn't waste a lot of time. And I'm very much comfortable with that. 
if we don't work together we can't achieve our goals Mulinichezea jana ni mwashinda leo. Lakini jamaa lazima nimshike. Eh? Nimemshika kweli? Eh, basically I've known Job uh, quite some time now. We started knowing each other around 2017, 2018 when we were conducting Kibera open discussion forums and uh, also spoken word workshop for young people here in Kibera. So basically Job was very supportive when it came to documenting the stories and also basically highlighting uh, the same stories in his uh, social media or other media avenues. Uh, recently we also played a pivotal role when it came to the COVID issue. There was a lot of need especially on the need to put food on the table, which is a basic need. So in the process, we started Adopt a Family, basically as a principle of linking, or as an approach of linking families, so that they are able at least to get, or to put food on their table. So that's how, again, Job came in handy, because I reached out to him, and he adopted some families, and I was able to ensure that those families had food for some period of time. Now spending time with people who are not your children or children who are not your really like you know you give birth to them it's not an easy thing uh, that needs resources that needs um, time it also needs energy so basically I can say he has demonstrated his passion by engaging himself in it I would actually want to do more for the people from this community because I understand the challenges that they go through. I can say I'm at a better opportunity to, to support them because I've created a lot of connections. They know me, they identify me as one of their leader or a community champion in five, 10 or 20 years to come. I still want to live here. Uh, I don't want to go out of Kibera because my people need me. The school is something that is uh, close to my heart. I want to see Shine Kibera grow and become a bigger school where it will accommodate many students and also offer knowledge to them, even have a a boarding school where they can come, sleep, and then go home. I want it to be a center of, uh, of excellence. The reason as why I went, uh, I started planting spinach and um, For Shine Kibera TV, I would like it to be a big media house that uh, taps into the talent here, nurtures the talent here, and offers good journalists and reporters, videographers from Kibera to other places. I want the story of Kibera to be, to be told in a good way and we are the only people who can talk about Kibera because we live here, we were born here and we understand the place very well. The Adopter Family Initiative was pioneered by Moses Omondi in 2020 during the country's first months of experience with COVID-19. Most of Kibra residents are casual laborers who earn their daily bread through manual daily jobs. With travel restrictions, curfews and most homesteads afraid of close contact with people, 
Kibra residents were left without any income and savings. That is when Moses came up with the idea of supporting these needy families. I started with my former university mates and some local friends here. And I told them I'm starting something. I want you to adopt a family uh, for a period of time by just giving them food only. And uh, there are those who said, okay, do you have the families? And uh, we identified the families. And uh, through the neighborhood, you know, we had the, the neighborhood volunteers. You know, These are young people that we've been born and brought up with. So they'll tell me, hey, there's this family that, you know, need, you know, some food. And uh, that's how we started. So as time went by, we, we started now specializing. So we developed approaches. So we had the four approach to the Adopter Family Initiative. One was the direct money transfer. Then the second one was the purchasing of vouchers, where we bought vouchers and it was worth 1,500 shillings, which is roughly $15 and we'll take them to those families and they'll go to a supermarket and buy food of their choice. The fourth one is now, <clears throat> was a more of our exit strategy, was to start these basic businesses for them. There are those who lost, you know, their savings. Because when they were told to stay at home and some of the, the rules were affected, the little money they had, they consumed. So they, couldn't, no, they could not revive back their businesses. So the businesses were costing between $30 to $50. That's about $3,000 to $5,000 in shape. Maurice. Hi, Koro. Sasa. Eh, akilo ni vocha. Eh, maibo biti mogo shopping mare matini. Eh, kaka dongi kaka wati mega. Eh. Nile, eh, kutana na Moses wakati nilikuwa na mgonjwa na wakati huo pia kulikuwa na janga la covid-19 wakati huo nilikuwa katika hali ngumu sana juu singeweza kupeleka mgonjwa hospitali na mgonjwa alikuwa na cervical cancer akaanza vocha kwenda kupata chakula cha support mgonjwa kila baada ya mwezi alikuwa anatokea support ya vocha kwenda kuchukua chakula uh, first of all, I'm a teacher. I used to teach in a private school. And when COVID came, uh, we, we closed the school. So I was like, wow, where am I going to start from? Because I was, what I was being given as a salary, I used to pay rent, buy food. I'm a, I'm a mother of four. So it was active. So one day, I was just this side. Uh, Moses was passing by this area. He met me and he knew me as a teacher. Teacher, wow, you have started a business. I told him, yes. Uh, he called me again. There's a group of teachers which he adopted a family supporting. He gave, he gave me 5,000. So it was like, well, I've seen God himself. I have a long history of serving the community. And uh, it started way back, you know, in, uh, when I was still in primary school. That was when I started serving my community. Ten years after high school, I, I went to campus. I got an opportunity to go to campus where I studied community development, which is my passion. While Job and Moses have managed to create an impact on their fellow countrymen, for some individuals it has been a struggle to change their own lives. As at March 2020, unemployment rate in Kenya was at 10.4%. With millions of young people scraping for food and other basic needs, it's even more precarious for those living in the informal settlements. Isaiah, a young single father, bold and witty. John and Stephen, 
loving fathers and Franklin, the glue that binds the group, all shared one thing in their past lives, crime. I'm 
nafikiria mmekula kumbe wapi kwa wenyewe ndio mnakutaka kukuliwa Isaiah's wife left him after she got fed up with his behavior, leaving her young son, Bravo, with a neighbor. A struggling single father with a sick father and son to take care of and determined to change his life, Isaiah opted for manual jobs. Wife, you school in Zidi. pia nafikiria mimi ndo do you mistake yote ningemsikiza beleni tungekuwa tunaishi poa baka sasa hii ningekuwa na wife wangu while Isaiah wasn't so lucky to keep his wife John counts himself blessed to have his children and wife who is supportive of him niki bila kwangu ina maana vile nimekaa hapa miaka mingi kuna mali niliona nilikuwa naenda mbaya nikakuja kuona yenyewe ifai niishi hivyo na watu wa kibira ndio sikama sasa ni jaribu kuwa na mabeste majirani manini marafiki au family yangu ku play pata me play kuona ndio kama ni reform pia kama huyo mama wangu wangu pia yeye ni asola yeye pia na pend anaweza enda mali hata pate amepata kibarua na fulia watu manguo anasaidiana pande pande hii ya niwache niumie sana ile naweza fikiria hata kitu mbaya mimi nilikuwa kwa asoli nilikuwa mjengo ukambani na yeye akakuja huko sasa ile alitoka jela akakuja aka huko nini ukambani sasa ndio tuliona huko si mbaya sasa tuliona tumesaidiana maisha yamepandilika. Sijisikia mali amefanya vitu vya mbaya. Sasa tuko kwa sasa hivi ndio tumeingia sasa kazi. Wala unatokea tokea umechelewa chelewa. Na mali kama kwa club hivi. Unajua tu msia kiwa poa toka tuingi ni mji una stress na mfuata na mteki na una mzamo ni sahi mimi nafurahiaga ni sahi kama saa moja saa hii hata sahi nimechelewa kuingia kwa nyumba sahi niko kwa nyumba nikule nioge kesho pia niamke niende job kwa hivyo naona naona ni poa sana ni maisha sahi naishi kuliko ile ya kitambo na filiponi ikiwa na familia kwa sababu huwezi boeka familia pia kama ni wife ana ku nini anaweza kupea pia ma advice plan sikapoa bado nikiwa na watoi wangu na ni bamba na hasol sana ndio kule poa kwa poa nafurahia sana Chana mimi pia mzazi wangu wangu pia alikuwa anafurahia kuniona. Furahia sana vile Mungu alinitoa kwa hiyo njia mbaya. Mpaka sasa hivi pale niko, ndio na mimi pia singekuwa. Tukaona tukaona Mungu ndio tulitumia tu kama tulitumia Mungu. Ndio tuanzia na hiyo njia mbaya na pia vile tunaona wenzetu vile wanaenda. Eh leo kona yake kesho nasikia yuko. Ndio nafurahiaga sana.
Isadiri kapodi wa herore. Isadiri kapodi wa herore. Era mamara kodi tindo seketore. Bedmo skinye omi Kenya oki michendo. Ni wagi ni jajok no no. Ni para e aumae. Mama. In order to keep themselves in check, the group is part of a reformed accountable group where they support each other as brothers. Majinango ni Franklin Biko Souza. Mimi ndio chairman wa hii kikundi ambacho najiita mwamko kwa vijana self help group. Hii mwamko kwa vijana kikundi tulikianzisha kwa minajili ya vijana tubadilike kutokana na vitendo vibaya ambavyo tumekuwa tukifanya ambapo polisi wamekuwa wametusumbua hapa kila kila wakati. Sasa hiyo ilikuwa kwanza ni faida ya kwanza ya kuunganisha hao vijana. Tume group pamoja. So ndo tukao na umuhimu wake tukaamua tuanze hiyo group. Tulianza 2013. Mama e e e au ma e e isaberika podi wa herore. Kabla sasa kipigo kubali lazima pia lazima uone changes zako lazima uone changes zako so hata katika hiyo story unaona ina mafunzo na nini watu tu pia mnajua ama besi zetu tulikuwa gana hapa lakini sasa unaona alikuwa alikuwa mauru zaidi sawa ngaweza nataka kuambiwa unaona mpoteza wenzetu wengi na sisi tukabadilika wakati tuliunda wakati tulikuwa tunaandika constitution yetu ambapo ndo sheria yetu tuliweza kupitisha hiyo kwamba kila mmoja atakuwa naangalia mwingine yani tuko pamoja tutakuwa tuna monitor mbembezi za mtu ndio asifanye nini asislide tena arudi nyuma tena kwa hizo vitu maana yake anaweza kuwa anatumia jina yetu ya kama kikundi kama lakini ya kweli labda ana kufanya mambo mengine unaona maisha yangu ya kitambo ilikuwa maisha maisha yenye sikupenda kuchoka na kulingana na pia wale wenye nime grow nao ile msukumo ambao wanakuletea kama kikundi ili ukutambue lazima ufanye zile vitu ambazo hao wanafanya sasa kulikuwa na msukumo mkubwa ndipo vitu kama hizo tukaingililia kwanza kukiona kitu cha mtu unachukua mhm bado umeangalia tu kama umeona amezubau unachukua unapita nayo sasa zingine unapatikana naye zingine unapigwa sasa zingine unafaulu unaenda nayo lakini so far tangu tuanzishe hiki kikundi hayo mawazo yalitoka kabisa Sikuizi nafanya tu kazi ya usafi kuletea watu maji huko nani kuwafagilia vibanda niposa nipate shilingi yangu ya hala ya halali kitambo ulikuwa na uhusiano mbaya sana na, na maafisa wa polisi kitambo tungeweza waona tumekitoroka mbaya sana lakini mabadiliko yalifanyika watu wakaamua kutulia community katukubali hata maafisa wa polisi wakatukubali hiyo ndio tofauti kubwa hiki kulipojiunga na kuanzisha hii kikundi kimetusaidia pia sana pakubwa Ah vijana walikuwa wabaya um, walikuwa wanatesa watu huku na huku hiyo mtaa ilikuwa inachurikana vibaya lakini na shukuru wakati wamekuja wakaacha hiyo mambo wakageuka wamekuwa vijana wazuri wameacha mambo mingi wameoa hata wakikitupata wakati wako wanatuchua sasa hii wanatuita kama ni mama wanakuita tu maate kwa heshima eh, kama ni mkijana wanamuita bro ma, um, kama ni mzee fate sasa wako na heshima hata wesi elewa ni wale vijana Though the group has managed to steer clear of bad habits, they are faced with a myriad of challenges. Jugata ile kazi tunafanya hapa kwa soko bado inahitaji mtu akue pia mtu msafi. Ni kwa sababu ya hii janga la corona ambayo imetokea sasa hivi, tujaweza kuomba kama tunaweza kupata mask, gloves, na sanitizers, 
na vitu vingine ambazo pia tutahitaji rex mkokotini ma overall mhm hakika ni current kwezea ana pata hata lori ile ilikuwa inaenda kumwaga kwa dumping tu peke yetu While the rest of the world enjoys close proximity to technologies in form of television, computers, phones, many in the informal settlement lack these privileges. But there's a thriving channel of disseminating information to these masses that exists here in Kibra. Art. Meet Faith Etienne a self-taught artist who's determined to use her skill to convey vital information to her community while keeping the youth from engaging in immoral activities. I'm the founder of a 360 Kibera. I'm 31 years old, a mother to one, single parent, and I love coaching. I'm a mentor. I train kids on how to paint, how to use color, especially in my community. I did my first piece while I was 17 years of age. I was in high school and uh, it was more of an expression. I was just drawing coming up with objects and painting them. Five years ago, when I joined an art gallery in Kibera, and uh, they gave me a position to work as a, a mentor, and my pieces starting changing from just an expression to sending messages. Through art, Faith has landed opportunities locally and abroad. I'm still dif discovering myself and uh, working with youths and kids is my tool for growth. I felt overwhelmed last year when I was at Lovington Mall. I was coaching kids on how to paint and uh, someone acknowledged my potential and uh, she, he referred me to an organization Nafsi Africa. I went to Nafsi Africa, introduced myself, they saw my pieces, and through that they gave me an opportunity to go represent East Africa in a European Union mural that was being done in Bulgaria and Denmark. While looking at her artwork, one cannot help but notice her signature. I'm more of experimental, but I feel I feel like I'm an, I'm an activist because in my pieces, most of the time, I express the pride of a black woman. Because I I feel I have a lot that life has offered me when it comes to challenges, when it comes to just believing because you are a, an African and doing what you do. So I appreciate women doing activities in my pieces. From the onset of the COVID-19 pandemic, Faith, together with her trainees and peers, have used their skill to sensitize people. Here, she drafts what will be the next mural. The need to communicate about COVID-19 and the measures that should be taken was for the need to talk directly with the people. But we could not walk door to door talking to them. So when we paint something, with the subject we feel will empower or maybe educate. So we felt the need to share what we love with our community. 
and that was when the neural idea came. This is my way of communication. This is my way to connect with different people, and uh, and it has been successful because through that our girls are engaged. They are not in the community. We know a lot of things are going on, especially in the slum. So peace, you know, feeling a stand out. What we have got to be funny, Kimbera. Nile moja ina appreciate medics on effort yenye wanaweka kila siku wakiamuka so ipi siko na nas ame hold nyororo hi nyororo imeshika a figurative object that we came up with yenye na symbolize corona na world iko hapo mbele kumanisha before there was the world then it came corona and there are nurses we humans trying to take cautions to control the effects of COVID-19. Job, Moses, Faith and the Reformed Men have embraced their home with the hope of a better future for themselves and their fellow neighbours. Yes, there are many problems here, but the youth of Kibra, most of them, are finding solutions to these problems while embracing each other. They remain steadfast to uplift the image of Kibra.